Welcome to part three of setting up the blacksmithing shop. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'll tell you why I'm excited. And I'll tell you why you should be excited too. Because we're getting power. Beautiful, beautiful power. So I touched on this briefly in the last video. Basically, from the front of the house, we're going to be running some armoured cable out of the main power unit all the way along the side here until we get to the corner and we're going to run it down the wall and it's going to go underneath these slabs to this corner. It's then going to run underneath these slabs as well and then I need to dig a trench about, uh, about 10 inches or so deep all the way along this edge here until I get to this concrete slab. What I'll need to do then is move all of this stuff, which uh, as you can imagine will be nice and easy. And I need to take either a lump hammer or an angle grinder and I need to dig out a small little trench along the edge here for it to run all the way along. And then we'll have it coming up the wall here, through the wall, coming out here and we're going to have a fuse box connected up here. From there we're going to have a uh, long line coming down to something going in this corner over here. We're also going to be having several various power outputs put all the way along this wall. I think we're going to have four or so of those. And then we're also going to need a lighting circuit. So I'm going to go out and buy some, probably some spotlights figure out some way of attaching them up here without uh, screwing holes through the roof and creating a leak into the electrics. So uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting times. Um, the electrician's coming at the end of the week, so my job is to do all of the prep work before he gets here. Let's do it. Well here's part one done, so obviously we're going to run down the wall, we're going to follow this trench through underneath the tiles, then we can just literally lay these straight back on top. I've hit a bit of a snag where I thought this was a tile, but this is actually cement or concrete, so I'm going to have to try and uh, either rip that up or dig through one or the other, I don't really know, and then it'll be onto this section here. There we go. Not easy. So we finally got this chute to join up through here by getting this big rock out of the way. And if you look just around the back, there's a sort of chute for the uh, the wire to run up. And then next step is to rip up all of these blocks over here. So basically it's now a case of getting all of this stuff out of the way and getting these tiles up, which is good because I need to replace them with those ones over there anyway. So killing two birds with one stone, I guess. That was not easy. But yeah, we got all the slabs up and there's a bit of um, concrete in this corner as well. I've left this tiny little section in the corner here because that's obviously holding up the water butt so that can stay. And the cable will go across into the corner there and then I need to dig out a trench along the side of the garden next. So, no rest for the wicked, let's get on with it. There you go, you get the gist. I'm about halfway down. Still got to do the rest. If you were wondering what I was doing when I kept disappearing off screen, I was replanting the bit of turf that I had put down in this corner. I thought I'd recycle it, because what I've been planning to do for ages is to have this width of stone go all the way down, whereas before it kind of did a bit of a step out and followed this line. So uh, recycling is good. I still need a bit more turf to finish off, but I thought while I'm doing this, I might as well, might as well. There we go. As you can see, that is now the uh, trench dug the entire length of the garden all along the back and up to the wall. Thankfully I haven't had to go as deep on this section because uh, this is going to be patioed eventually so it'll be the same as the slabs over there. It doesn't need to be deep, it just needs to be uh, covered as it were. So uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it there for today because I'm absolutely shattered and then I need to work on uh, this section here underneath the patio. I'm hoping I won't have to do any stone chipping. I might be able to fit it in that small gap but it depends obviously uh, how far back that goes. Well, it's a new day and uh, the task is to move all of this lot somewhere else. They're really heavy and I really don't want to do this. <laughs> Unfortunately, as you may have noticed, all of this is kind of in the way. So we need to do something with that first. Pieces of metal I might hang on to for the time being because they could come in useful, but the bits of wood I think we're just going to burn. So let's get all of this stuff out of the way and uh, figure out pretty much what we're going to do.
Well, that's that lot safely out of the way, except for the pile of wood and the pile of rubble. The rubble I need to move from this corner over to this corner. The wood I think I may have found a use for with this possibly handily placed incinerator. So we're going to have fire and stone. <laughs> Well, I think it's fair to say the fire's lit. Now we just gotta get on with moving these rocks. All right, I'm gonna have to take a break for a while. That has absolutely knackered me. I've managed to pretty much reduce this pile by probably two thirds. Got it relatively neatly stacked over there. The rest of it is probably just going to be a pile. I'm probably down about halfway through this wood. The fire's going strong. And I need to try and get rid of that um, that old compost bin over there, which is absolutely mullered. So I'm probably going to spend the next few minutes chopping that up. Be gone, compost bin. If any of you think I'm over-exaggerating the effort involved in this, then look at the sweat on my brow. Mmm. Well, the fire has done some decent damage to the pile of wood. That's all that is left now. I did pick out a few little bits which I thought might be useful. Just a couple of bits of square timber, some doweling, and a few bits of metal bar. But uh, I'll be honest, I've been um, stalling massively moving this pile. I just don't want to do it. It's absolutely knackering. Sod it. Come on. I think that is about as reasonably big as I can get the pile. The rest is all just small little stones and rubble. So I think that's probably just gonna have to stay as a pile, but I'll just sort of sweep it over into this corner here so I can get access to this concrete slab underneath. Ah, oh, I made it angry! That took a long time, but now we finally have the clear edge. So we can now look into uh, whether or not we need to cut the stone or hopefully we can get away with it. We will see. So the long and short of it is we'll need to cut the stone. Um, there are areas like here where it does go a little bit wider just to get around the fence post, but unfortunately like down here and then pretty much all along this edge it goes back into like a pincer. So yeah, we're gonna have to cut a groove unfortunately. Time to get the angle grinder out with the stone cutting disc. Et voila, all done. So I think that is now all the prep work finished and the fire has fallen out of the fire. So here's a prime example of the next problem I need to fix. You can see that when it's raining, the roof is pooling water. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be causing any problems inside as there aren't any obvious leaks. Um, considering there's a fair amount of water up there, I'd imagine it'd be pretty apparent if there was. But that said, I don't want it becoming a problem later down the line. So the drain is somewhere behind this wall here and I, I need to try and fix that. Hopefully it's just a case that it's blocked. But failing that, we may have to do a bit of um, replacing. I think, however, I'm probably going to wait until it's stopped raining before I tackle this problem. It's kind of cool that it's a day later and this thing is still ridiculously hot. So in the immediate now, while I've got some time to kill, uh, I've decided I'm going to start mounting some lights. I've bought two sets of spotlights, these ones here, uh, and I'm going to be putting one up sort of round here somewhere and then one up round here somewhere. So I need to measure out the halfway point and then I've bought some wooden board which I'm going to use to put between the two slats. Uh, and that will allow the wires to go up and out rather than, because I think this is literally the roof, so I don't want to drill into that. So that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room to feed the wires through when the electrician comes. I'm going to paint this white, uh, and then I've bought some nice little bits of, um, I think it's aluminium trim, which fits nicely, and that'll just make it look pretty. There we go, that's both the light panels painted. Um, now I've just got to let them dry and then we'll install the actual lights on them. Jeez, the continuity of this video is all over the place. But yeah, spot the difference. I've now emptied and cleaned the floor. I've also cleaned down this wall and I'm gonna get painting with this and then hopefully, if I have time, crack on with uh, starting to paint the floor. Well, as you can probably see, this wall needed a lot of patching up. I did a bit of an experiment. On this side I used polyfiller uh, and on this side I used the normal cork sealant I've used everywhere else just to see if it makes any difference. Obviously it's not really going to affect me, but I might be able to pass on some info for you guys. 
Right, I've just gone back over these two and give them a second coat. Um, for some reason the first coat went all weird and smeary, um, so I had to redo it. It's looking a lot better now, so I've got to leave these to dry now until tomorrow unfortunately, so I won't be able to finish those today as I was hoping. So now I've got that to do and I've got all of this wall to paint, so plenty to be getting on with in the morning. Well, I was planning on gluing these side bits on, but actually, they're such a tight fit, I think I'm going to leave them as they are. They've come out pretty nicely. I mean, they'll look better with bulbs and when the electric's on, but frankly, I think they don't look half bad. Kind of cool and stylized. I like it. I've also marked out the power points for tomorrow, so when the Sparky gets here, he can just crack on and install those on the wall. In the meantime, I'm going to get started on the first base coat on this wall, and uh, hopefully that means tomorrow I'll be able to finish it up. I think in regards to the comparison between the, um, the polyfiller and the decorator's cork, I'd actually probably recommend going with the polyfiller. It seems to have done a better job, it feels a lot more secure, and it's probably going to be better paintable. So, like I say, for me, it's not such a big thing now because it's a bit late. If ever you guys want to do it, then yeah, just get a, uh, a normal polyfiller, one that's suitable for brick and masonry. There we go, last wall, base coat, all done. I literally used the last little bit of the bucket on that. That was by far and away the hardest wall so far. It was so mangled, so porous. It just soaked up the paint. So like I say, I only had enough paint for one coat, so I'm gonna have to make do with trying to do two top coats and hope that that will cover it. So it's the end of the first day of the Sparky being here. He hasn't actually started on attaching the electrics to the box yet, but he has run the armored cable through and I'll show you where we're up to. So he's drilled it through and it's running all the way along the side of the house here. We've run it underneath as you saw yesterday uh, and I've spent the day putting down the slabs. I've redone these slabs with the longer ones instead of uh, these square ones here. I just think it looks nicer. Um, I've also gone over the edges with the turf I bought. You can see I filled in the trenches so the armoured cable runs all the way along here underneath all of this and again we've re-turfed it. You can see it comes out again there because obviously there's no point doing anything to that until uh, the patio here has been laid and then inside it runs up to the fuse box which again obviously hasn't been done yet he's then put on the four sets of power sockets a double gang light switch which again is not yet connected he has attached the lights and then he's put the other double gang socket in the corner here so all in all it's looking pretty good for a day's work so tomorrow he's got to come back he's got to obviously connect up all these little bits and pieces i might actually end up switching out these sockets anyway he's got to obviously set up the fuse he's got to line up the switch and he's also got to do the stuff at the front what i've been doing with my time today besides clearing up his mess is i've run an ethernet cable again through the same hole i was originally planning on running it underground as well but i thought actually it's probably going to be better as it's not such a strong cable to run it over so i've secured it all the way along the fence once you get to this corner i've run it up and you can see i've attached it underneath the guttering so it's sort of quite sneaky and subtle you wouldn't really know it was there i've then run it along the top of the lean-to it goes down behind the door along here and then it goes into the wall there i then had to take out the side panels and the wire comes through i've run it underneath this one it then comes through here where the waste pipe is for the washing machine runs all the way behind the washing machine. And then as described, it comes out here just next to the router. There's the other end. As soon as we have power in the garage, I'll set up the new router and we should have both electric and Wi-Fi in there, which will be awesome. Well, it's day two of the Sparky being here. He's currently at the front of the house sorting out the, uh, the main electrics box. In the meantime, I've been undoing his hard work and possibly upsetting him a little bit, but uh, I decided that I wanted some USB sockets, so I've changed out two of his uh, normal ones for these USB ones. The idea is I can charge both my iPad and my phone and things while I'm in here. Um, what I'm also doing is I'm switching up the light switch, so I'm going from this one here, which I just didn't much like, to uh, a wider one, and it just has a nicer, clunkier feel when you turn the lights on. Uh, and then the last thing I'm doing, I'm installing an additional plug socket from here, going up, I'm drilling holes all the way through these beams at the moment, uh, and I'm going to run another plug socket down, similar to what's on the other side. Um, which will be how I power my forge and the, uh, the blower for my forge, which is currently down there. Just like that, uh, I've fitted this one up, it's all connected, I've run the cable through, and I've connected it back up to this one here. And now I've just got to get the Sparky to make sure he's happy with everything I've done on this side, and uh, hopefully it'll just be a case of waiting for him to sign it off. Well, I don't like to make it easy for people. Uh, this tiny little box here is now absolutely packed to the brim. All of this had to be installed and all of this had to be moved from here up. So he's done a really good job of fixing all that in and making it fit.
So everything's hooked up and the power's now back on. Uh, the Sparky's literally just in the garage, just finishing up. He's doing all the safety checks so that he can basically sign off on a tick sheet that everything's safe. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be following a guide from Richard Lloyd. I'll put the link in the description how to set up with a second router in the garage. And hopefully soon I'll have both power and Wi-Fi in there. So check back in a bit and hopefully it'll all be done. And there it is, everything is done, everything is signed off. We now have a fully functioning garage with the electrics. Last thing I've got to do is finish setting up the Wi-Fi. I think I'm pretty much there. I've literally just got a few final checks to do and we'll give it one last test. Right then, I've been mucking around with the Wi-Fi for long enough. I think it's time to plug this cable into the back of this router and then we'll take this one outside and hopefully we should now be able to connect to the Wi-Fi in the garage. Stand by. Okay, we're looking good so far. PJT forging Wi-Fi has appeared. Let's click on that. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna let you see me enter my password, so I'll skip forward so once I've done that bit. And let's try joining. Fingers crossed, we should have full strength Wi-Fi appear in a second. Beautiful, let's give that a test. Look at that, perfect. That is what we like. Look at that fantastic quality of video right there. Last thing I now need to do with that is just to make it pretty, I'll secure it just underneath the fuse box on the wall, somewhere around here. Tell you what, feels like sacrilege putting holes in these walls after the amount of time I spent filling them in. I know what it needs, some more raw plugs. Oh, I just gotta hope they fit. There we go, end of part three. We now have power, we now have Wi-Fi, we have painted walls. Next step, we'll be getting started on the floor and hopefully trying to install some kind of workbench. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm now gonna upload this part on my new Wi-Fi. Cheers, see ya. Oh, like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah.